Amen? Amen again. Amen again. Today I want to talk to you about understanding spiritual authority. Understanding spiritual authority. I'll go ahead and tell you, you're going to want to take notes online. You're going to want to take notes. You want to get this out because I believe the Spirit of God is going to, uh, as he unveils his word, he's going to show you where to apply it. God is good like that. Amen? Understanding spiritual authority. Now, this is important. You might not think this is important, uh, but I believe a lot of what's going on and a lot of stuff that the church is doing, even that the world is doing, is because the church, the body of Christ, does not understand our level or have, a, have the revelation of spiritual authority. And it's kind of hard to walk in that which you do not understand. Do you, do you understand? If they hire you for a position at work and you don't understand the job function, it's kind of hard to fulfill the job, right? Same way with the things of the Spirit. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Let's start there just for a foundation. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture today because I believe uh, that this needs a lot of scripture. Amen. I, I don't want to extract from one thing and then just add to it. I want you to fully understand what the Lord is saying. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Very familiar text. Philippians 2, we're going to start at verse 5. We're going to read down to verse 11. Are you there? Philippians 2 and 5 says this. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Do you see that? Even the death of the cross, verse 9. Wherefore, God, has, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank God for the reading of his word today. Um, in understanding spiritual authority, we need to first recognize that all spiritual authority is in Christ Jesus. I want to start there because if you don't, you'll get into war. You ever hear somebody say they're they warring? The devil is busy? Guess what? The devil might be busy, but Jesus is finished. So next time somebody tell you the devil is busy, you tell them Jesus is finished. What does that mean? That means no, whatever the devil does has all been wrapped up in what Jesus did. you got to understand this now. We're talking about spiritual authority. So our spiritual authority, we need to understand fully that all power and authority is in Christ. There is no, watch this, there is no legitimate power and authority outside of Christ. Now, there are some powers and authorities outside of Christ, but they're illegitimate. Doesn't mean they're invalid. Doesn't mean they're not real. They are real, but they're illegitimate as it pertains to the things put in place. What, what we read here in Philippians chapter 2 is that Jesus thought it not robbery to leave heaven, come to earth, put on a man suit, put on mortality, and die as a sin sacrifice for us. Watch this. Went to hell. In our stead, he went all the way, stayed there three days. Just like Jonah was in the well three days, he was in hell three days. Resurrected by the Holy Spirit and now is seated on the right hand of the Father. Now, he walked around here a little bit, you know, said let a few people see him and, and talk for 40 days and talk to him. I told you what I was going to do. But he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. The right hand represents authority. So when you understand authority now, Jesus is seated at the right hand making intercession for you and I. So he's praying that we understand what he did. That's why he said it is finished. So if you're feeling defeated, if you're feeling abused, if you're feeling violated, if you feel like you're always losing, it could be because you have not grasped fully the understanding of your spiritual authority. Say spiritual authority. Now let's look at this text here. Because we, we, this, is a, this is a popular text here at World Champions. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So when you understand that now, uh, many people who, who are looking for a reason, looking for a booger in the Bible, looking for a reason not to believe, well, how can God be this and this? It's God the Father. There's God the Son, which is Jesus, and then there's God the Holy Spirit. They're all one, but they have different functions, all right? So they have different functions. Just like I'm man, but I'm also husband, but I'm also son, but I'm also brother, but I'm also pastor, but I'm also friend. I'm the same me, but I have different functions to different people in my life, amen? So he says here now, he was in the form of God. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation. It took upon him the form of a servant. Servant. It was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, where God has highly exalted him. That's it. Authority must be given. You, I, know, I, know we talk, I know we talk it. I know we talk it. We say, take authority. Authority must first be granted. It has to be received. Someone in authority has to give you authority. Someone in HR has to hire you. Someone in your supervisor has to promote you. Someone who does not have authority over you cannot promote you. You have your mama say, oh, you've been at that job so long. Oh, they should just promote you. She has no power. She has no authority to move you anywhere. Nowhere. That's, I, I thought about Everybody Loves Raymond, where, where the mom tried to get Robert a job with the FBI. Went in talking to him, <laughs> writing them letters, making them cakes. She had no power, no authority to promote. Someone in authority has to give you authority. You better get this because some people have a problem with authority yeah. and wonder why they have no authority. Right. See, power follows authority. Power is actually in authority. So if you're operating in power, but you're not in an authority, there's a problem there. There's a disconnect there. So as it pertains to the things of God, now again, I know the world does it all kind of ways they do it. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about church. I'm talking about the leaders of the kingdom. Amen? God's way is, and God gave him, he exalted him, and gave him a name which was above every name. That's why Mary and Joseph had to name him Jesus or Yeshua. Why? Because the power was in the name. God is eternal. The word of God is eternal, right? So when the angel Gabriel gave them the name, Jesus, in the Bible, in the Hebrew, whatever they named you, that's what you were. That's why you got to be careful with these crazy names. Y'all be coming up trying to get the daddy's first letter. And all. <laughs> You better be careful what you name your baby, okay? I ain't going down that road today. Watch this now. He gave him a name which was above every name. So Jesus now. When John baptized him, he comes out of the water. The Spirit of God descends like a dove. There's a voice from heaven that said, Behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He's still speaking to the name of Jesus, who is now the Word of God. And the Word, according to Isaiah 55, can't come back void, can't come back undone, can't come back unfinished. So now God is now confirming and affirming his Word, his name that he gave to Jesus, who would now be fully obedient, who can only do what the Father says, who can only say what the Father says, who's now going to go all the way and get to the end and say, nevertheless, even when another will comes up, even when pain comes up, even when persecution comes up, the, the Jesus, the Christ is going to say, nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. Why, why, why? Because I'm here to, to gain many sons and daughters. So when we understand that, Jesus, now he, he's our elder brother too. You got to get that. Some people wrestle with that. That's why you got to know your word. You got to understand the word and not think it's sacrilegious. Jesus is Lord, but he's also our elder brother. The heavenly father, is our, he says, pray this way. Our father. If he's our father, then I, he's my brother. Right? You're my brother and sister. I, I believe you are anyway. I believe you are. Hopefully you believe you are. Watch this now. He says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. So because of the authority given to the name of Jesus, that when you activate now and use the name of Jesus, you have all power and authority. But the key is you don't get to use the access of the name until you've been submitted to the name. Uh, 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 sometime in, in police, uh, they, before they give them a taser, you know, they tase them first. 
they hold them and they say, before we give you this, you need to know what this feel like. You're supposed to know what Jesus feels like before you go try to use him. You're supposed to know what the, <laughs> you're supposed to know what the word does on you first. Before you go trying to hit somebody with the word, because you won't be so quick to hit them with the word when the word hits you. You'll be like, oh, let me give, let me present this word to them in bite size and make sure they understand it. Cause I know when I'm wrong. I know when I miss it. I know how that thing feels. Come on. Authority is given to the name of Jesus. Now, this is important because it says, at the, name, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. That covers everything. I don't care what other planet they find. <laughs> I don't care what other stars they run into, what, what, what grass they find on Mars. That, that, everything in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth has to submit to the name of Jesus. Now, those in Christ, you should rejoice over that. Because if you're in Christ and you're positioned in Christ, Colossians says, those who are in Christ, who are now dead with him, are now risen with him, set your affections on things that are above. When I understand that, hold on, Jesus has authority, and we're going to go next where he gave it to you. Let's, let's look at something. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Just verse 12. You see, Ephesians 6 and 12, I want to, I want to get something here that we need to understand. Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm going to read that again. For we, us, our fight, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against parties, against races, against the police, against the who, against the rich, against the poor. We wrestle not I wait. There's nothing new under the sun. It is amazing that we try to come up with new stuff to fix old problems. The word of God is eternal. And when we understand that, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I don't put time and energy trying to get my brother, my sister, who I perceive to be my enemy, my neighbor, to do something that flesh and blood will not accomplish. That's not my fight. I said it's not my fight. I'm amazed that the church is off their post and we're getting up. We're trying to fight things of this world. Pay attention to what the text says. But against principalities, plural, powers, plural, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. There are rulers who benefit from the darkness of this world. When you're dealing with the world, you got to understand you're dealing with the world. And the world, God's, the world wants God's results, but they don't want God's regiment. They want to be fit in God, but they just don't want to eat what God said eat. So when you're dealing with the world, you got to understand that they want the end result. So they're going to be Babylon. Babylon tries to do it without God, without God's principles, without God's ways. I want to use the name of God. But when I understand that and spiritual wickedness in high places. So guess what? You're going to need Jesus to fight these battles. You can't win by yourself. I say that again. You can't win by yourself. You ain't that smart. You ain't that powerful. You ain't that strong. You need Jesus. Huh? You need the Christ. You need the one who prevailed. Uh, Colossians also says that what? He triumphed over them. He wasn't no secret. He was stretched out on that cross, and they were saying he saved everybody else. He, he healed everybody else. Look at him up there. We, why, why won't he get himself? I believe him if he get down. If he can get himself off those nails, I believe in Jesus. I'm in position. I'm doing something that you don't understand right now. I'm set. This it ain't about my victory. Listen, believers, it ain't never about your victory. Be careful about self-preserving. In God, God's going to position you that your life is going to become ministry for somebody else. Your pain is going to be a shackle breaker for somebody else. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So I need Christ to have victory. Go to Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. We're laying foundation today, amen? And this is more than likely going to be a part one or something, but we're going to walk this thing out because we need to understand that our victory is in Jesus. Luke 9, verse 1 through verse 6 says this. It says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power 
and authority over some devils, over the cute devils, over the weak devils. No, he gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither stage, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Authority was received from God the Father to Jesus the Christ, and now the Christ has released it to those that belong to him. Are you with me? This is very important because when I understand that the power came from him, see what, what, what we do, we abuse power when we dishonor the authority. So your job gave you a position. That means they gave you certain, certain controls and certain things to manage and certain things to function. And now when I start dishonoring the authority that empowered me, I pervert the power. So I must keep the power in alignment with the person who empowered me. The power must stay in alignment with the people who empowered me. Or else you don't get in a position and now pervert and begin to twist begin to turn. He says all power and authority was given to them by Jesus, and now that they gave it to him, he gave it to them, they went out doing exactly what he said. Listen, there's a level of obedience that will get you the results if you just do what Jesus said. Do Sometimes we're too creative in our minds. Sometimes we're too traditional. Sometimes we got our own thing we're trying to work out, and we're trying to use the stamp of God instead of just obeying what he said to do. So now he gave them power and authority. Do you see that in the text now? Go over with me, go over with me to Luke 10. Let's look at, look at Luke 10 real quick. Luke 10, verse 17 through verse 20. It says, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. How? 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 How are they subject? Come on, I'm talking about you devil busters. You stomping the devil on the head. How are the devils subject? The devils are subject to you through the name, which is above every name, where all power and authority has been given. It is through the name of Jesus. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. Oh, oh, hold on, hold, back me up. Hold on, I got to read that again. I, I got to go back. I got to go back to 17. <laughs> and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. You're not supposed to be bragging. <laughs> Casting out devils is not a brag for you. It's amazing that we take the works that God does through us and we use them as brag points to people. That's something there. That's a vanity there. That's a, Peter and them said when they got the man healed who's at the gate called Beautiful, they say, stop looking at us. We, hey, let me help you, player. We didn't do this. We were obedient. See, obedient produces the results. Ain't nothing great about me. I'm obedient. Ain't no brag, ain't nothing to brag about. God has no respect of persons. Obey. Obey. I'm processing obey. I'm praying obey. I'm figuring out obey. Why is your stuff delayed? Because you don't have quick obedience. And when you do miss it, you got slow repentance. You need quick repentance. And you need to cast off slow, slow obedience. Right? So he says, notwithstanding, don't rejoice in this. Not that the spirits are subject unto you. Why? Because they were through his name. That's why he's saying that. It. it wasn't nothing special about you. You just went and did what I told you to do. But rather rejoice because your names 
are written in heaven. Do you understand that when you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, he writes your name in the Lamb's book of life, and no devil, no eraser can erase the blood of Jesus by which your name has been written with, and now you're settled, and you're supposed to rejoice that you are saved. You're supposed to rejoice that heaven's your home. You're supposed to rejoice that you've been redeemed. Not about the works that follow. You're perverting your power. Are you with me today? Don't pervert your power. Tell your neighbor, say, don't pervert your power. Now, that's important because Matthew 16 and 19 says this. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So God has set us up with spiritual authority, and we can walk in that authority. Watch this now. Here's the problem. We don't have our identity. See, authority is supported by identity. If they give me the position at work, and they tell me you have the power to hire, and you have the power to fire. If I don't understand my identity in that role to both hire and to fire, I cannot walk fully in the power and authority that's been granted to me. Why? Because something, uh, hmm, that's my friend. <laughs> I like him. I don't, if I don't hire him, they're going to say this. If I fire her, she's going to think that. I got to be in my identity so I can walk in my authority. Identity is the resting place for authority. And identity is found in God. And when I see people not walking in their authority, that tells me they're not walking in their identity, which tells me there's a disconnect between them and God. Are you with me? So when stuff keeps beating you up, when you keep praying, there's some things that we pray about that we shouldn't be praying about. Why? Because God has already given you the authority to do it. And we're trying to figure out and make it flowery and religious. I'm gonna, let me go pray again because I'm not sure. No, you have the authority. You need courage now. Some of you are praying for stuff that God already told you. You're so when you come into the kingdom, it is not an excuse to become a doormat for devils, okay? That, that's the devils and those who he uses. You do not become a doormat because now we want to be nice. Listen, God will use that spunk. He'll convert it. He'll convert that thing which you used to do in the world. He'll convert it. He'll use it. he used use Peter's. He'll use it. And what we try to do, we try to become so distant from the person we were, not understanding that the gift you were operating in was from God. The thing was, you didn't have your identity. That's why the enemy was able to pervert it. That's why you used it in that gang. You weren't supposed to be in no gang. You weren't supposed to be selling drugs. You were supposed to be a CEO. But you didn't understand your identity, so the environment that you were being groomed in was able to steer your gift. That's why the power has to stay in alignment with the authority. Are you with me? So he says, Be su praise God that your name is written, not because the demons flee. Because it is not you that does the healing. It is not you. That's the problem. That's why we're not seeing the signs and wonders and miracles. Because Mark 16 says, these things, these signs, these wonders, these miracles shall follow them that what? Believe. Believe where? Believe in Jesus. It's him that does the healing. It's him that does the saving. It's him that does the delivery. I'm just his mouthpiece. You're just his witness. The witness, the witness just takes the stand and says, this is my testimony. This is what happened for me. This is what he did for me. This is how he brought me out. I used to be dumb. I used to be broke. I used to be ugly. There's some people that's pretty who think they're ugly because they don't have the identity. So now they're trying to go fix stuff and cut stuff. And go, uh, 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 uh. When I understand that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Are you with me? So in understanding our spiritual authority, watch this, our authority and power rest in our identity and our identity rest in God. It has to rest in God. That's why we got to spend time now learning who we are. 
And as you become developed in who you are, who God made you, guess what? Some people who knew the old you, you're going to find out if they really love you or they love who you were. Because when they love you, as you become you, they're going to still love you. But when they love who you were, and as you become who you are, they're going to... And brand new. You ain't used to act like that. You ain't never respond like that. You ain't never tell me no. When you start telling me no, you ain't coming. I can't get your car. That's what we do. What's happening? You're coming into identity, which is, watch, now you're creating healthy boundaries. Now you're, health, you're creating healthy protocols for your life to now function and be prosperous. And people don't like it. Ain't nobody mad at your new burglar system but the burglar. The neighbors be like, ooh, where you get that from? Who, girl, give me that car. Let me car. I like what you're doing. I like how you're protecting your stuff. Oh, I like the new stuff you went and bought. And you got cameras. Oh, you put a bar. Oh, you got a security. Oh, you got a code. You can't just walk in your door no more? Because you got something on the inside that's valuable now? I can't just come in your door. I just can't open up the screen. I just can't pop up in your living room and say I'm here on and out. You want to read that? People that really love you appreciate your new boundaries. Celebrate your burglar bars. They ain't asking you for the code. When they really love you, cheer out, oh, I love this new one. Well, what's the code? You know, because when I want to come in when you ain't home and I want. No, player, I put these up. You the main one. These bars are full. Call before you come by. I stepped off into something now, huh? Y'all seen the meme with Kermit with the remote? He just looking. He ain't looking up. That's when you came by the house on the nouns. You ain't called first. I'm in purpose. You can't just pop up in my life. Don't be mad if I didn't answer your call. I'm in purpose. I didn't know you was getting ready to call me. You ain't, I called and you ain't pick up. Okay. You didn't leave a message either. When they don't leave you a message, you better find them in the spirit. They ain't want nothing. Waste your time. Because if somebody really wanted you, hey, I was calling, this is what I need. Or they'll send you a text. This ain't what I'm on, but I, somebody need to hear this, what I'm on. <laughs> you better discern them in the spirit. Amen. Now, this is important in this scripture. Let's look at it again. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall loose on earth. What is God saying? Jesus is saying, I've given you authority, and I'm not taking it back. I gave it to Adam in the beginning. He forfeited it to Satan. I told Satan, I'll be back. I'm going to fix it. You run for a while. But me and the Holy Spirit, we'll be back through a seed, through a, through, a, through a woman. And now, watch this. I'm going to restore spiritual authority here in the earth. And I'm going to give it to those whom I see fit to give it to who are in me. You got to understand it. So it's key that you work on your identity before you start to go and try to operate in power. Get familiar with the position before you start speaking. Amen. Now, this is important because whatever's going on in your life is what you're letting go on. Can we get to the ugly part? We had the, pre the prelim. Can we get to the ugly part? Whatever's going on in your world is what you allow. And you ain't no heaven to do something. Heaven like, I'm waiting on you, player. I'm going to back up what you say. That's why he says, if we pray, our Father hears us. And if he, we know he hears our petitions, then we have whatsoever he says. Some of us are getting our teeth kicked in in areas that we're supposed to be walking in victory. And if your mindset and reference point is victim, this happened to me, and? They did, and? What does that have to do with what I called you to do? Do you know Jesus could have been a victim? They killed all my, the kids that was born around the time I was born. They killed them all. And we had to move over here. And then we had to move over to Nazareth. Then we had to go over to Egypt. 
My mom and daddy left me in the temple. They didn't even talk about me again until I was 30. Perspective keeps you from being a victim. That's why you got to get delivered from you. Because you, do you know we see everything as it pertains to us? What's in it for me? What about me? I'm being left out. What's, what's the up for me? What's the, and I get that because we are us. But when we start seeing things from the kingdom perspective, we get a helicopter view of what heaven is saying. And now we operate in an authority that's even above our own personal soul. See, the authority that we walk in is not of us. It's from God that's given to us. Are you with me? Now, let's deal with this devil thing, because that's, that's usually where we, where we get, get lost, and we just say, the devil does this, and the devil does that. The devil is limited. The devil is defeated. You need to understand that. He might be busy, but again, Jesus is finished. And when I understand Jesus is finished, I'm not moved by his busy. I'm not intimidated. Now, you need to understand this, because we, we, in efforts to do good preaching and good hooping, we, we misappropriate and we say things sometimes the Bible don't say. So I want to be clear. The devil does have power. Okay? It's illegitimate. Watch this. And it's been, it's been superimposed upon by, by Jesus. That's why when Jesus was here in the earth, when you read the Gospels, he was tempted of the devil. The devil was able to take him up on the pinnacle of a roof. The devil, the devil was able to take him. The devil said, I will release unto you the glory of the kingdoms of this world. The devil has power. The devil can deceive. The devil can bless. It just comes with a trap. That people make deals with the devil all the time. You remember that back in the day you talk about the crossroads? Y'all don't look at me like that. Go down there and make a deal with the devil so I can be successful. That's, that's, that's real stuff. People make deals with the devil all the time. Hmm. Like we had to go back and teach that, huh? I ain't going there today, but I'm just letting you know. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. I'm going over this because here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to be afraid anymore of the devil. I don't want you to be afraid of him showing up. I don't want you to be afraid of him touching something. If you're informed properly and you understand your spiritual authority, it will make you aware of the advantages you have over the devil. Are you with me? Ephesians 6, verse 10. We're going to read verse 10 through verse 17. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Stop right there. Where's your strength? In the Lord. Not in your last name. Not in your denomination. Your, your strength is in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles means missiles. It means the devil shoots darts at you. Watch this. He watches your life. He watches your lineage. He watches your mom and them. He watches, your, he watches the dysfunctional. He watches the generational curses. He watches what has been reinforced from generation to generation, and that's where he attacks you at. Because he feels like there's already a breach because your authority figures are already open to this thing. Are you with me? So he pays attention to your life. That's why you need to sometime come from up under. That's why God told Abram, come from out of your daddy's house because I'm about to reveal something to you that your daddy going to smother because your daddy's a pagan. I know he loved you, but he's pagan. I'm speaking blasphemy right now because some of y'all don't want to depart. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, come on, truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, come on. Isn't it amazing that, that God told us to stand? He didn't tell you to fight the devil. He didn't tell you to run from the devil. He told you to stand. See, if you do what God tells you, your protection is in what he told you to do. But when you stand, you got to be standing in truth. That's why you got to know your word. That's why you got to get out of your feelings. Because your feelings are not going to let you hear truth. Having the breastplate of righteousness. We go into 2 Corinthians 5 where it says what? We are the righteousness of God. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be what? The righteousness of God. So when I understand that I'm the righteousness of God, my sins are not speaking to me. Because what happens is we don't understand we're the righteousness of God. And when it comes time to stand, the enemy who's also the accuser of the brethren, he starts bringing up your dirt. 
He stopped bringing up your past. He stopped bringing up your curse. He stopped bringing up your temptation. And it makes you feel not worthy to speak and stand. But when you understand, you're not standing in your own strength. You're not standing in your own might. I'm here because he who knew I was sin before he died for me still chose to die for me that I would be the righteousness of God. So I'm not standing here in my mistakes. I'm standing here in his masterpiece. I'm standing here. I'm standing here clothed in the Messiah. <laughs> Truth, righteousness. Have your feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's why you have to understand the scriptures. You have to understand the scriptures. Why? Because the gospel brings peace. And whatever's still in your joy is still in your peace. It's not of God. That ain't God testing you. He tested Jesus. That stuff you're doing, that's your dysfunction talking back to you, and you're trying to spiritualize it because you're not going to obey. Mm -hmm. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So when I understand that I'm saved, are you with me? And I understand the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. I'm now able to stand in a place with authority because of what God is doing. You, got, you need this. You need the word on the inside of you. So when a situation comes, you go in your holster. I ain't running. <laughs> I see you. I heard them. I, I ain't got to go clock out. I ain't got to take my break right now. I'm going to reach, right? When you armed, you ain't got to. I just look like this. I'm concealed carrying this thing. When that situation come up, I'm going right in this holster and pull out the word and stand because God backs his word. I'm not standing here by myself. I'm not standing here broken. I'm not standing here a mess up. I know who I was last year. I'm not standing here in who I was last year. All of heaven is backing you when you're in truth and in righteousness, you're not alone. You're not speaking for you. All of heaven is backing me up, saying, say it. Because see, God, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. <laughs> the scripture we read in Philippians 2, 5, 11, it says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in heaven in earth and under there, every tongue. So there's something with the tongue, that the power of life and death is where? In the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, right? So the tongue carries power. So what's what? Heaven's not going to speak for you. Heaven's going to move when you speak. But if you're speaking crazy, because you don't know who you are, and you don't understand the treasure you got on the inside of you, your world is voice activated. And whatever you keep saying, you keep bringing and drawing towards you. So you keep cursing and you keep repeating the more colloquialism. Your great grandma, big mama said, and it wasn't producing nothing for big mama. And you keep going, I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. His word is forever settled in heaven. Therefore, I declare his word here in the earth. My authority is in the word. I know how I feel, but the word of God says. I know what they said, but the word of God says. I'm saved. And now I pull the sword of the spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. You need the sword of the spirit. That's what he's armed you with. Your authority is in the word. And if you don't know your word, you're unarmed. You're a victim to whatever's going on around you. But when I know the word, <laughs> not just know it in my head. I know it in my heart. <laughs> I know it in my body. Hold on. I know it in my bedroom. I know it in my money. <laughs> I know it in my relationships. I know it in my phone calls. I know it on my internet. I know it on my computer. When I know the word of sword and the spirit, because if I try to pull it, and it ain't cut me first. If I go to pull the word, come on, come on, come on. If I go to pull, the, if I go to pull my weapon, and I have not trained with it, I have not practiced with it. I'm going to hurt somebody, probably me. 
probably somebody I love. That's why you got to settle. Ha, ha. That's why you got to study to show yourself approved. That's why you got to be found in the word ha, as a student. That's why you got to be a life student to let the word work on you. So when you go to pull it, it don't backfire. It don't misfire. I don't miscut. He already cut me play. I'm getting ready to cut. I used to go to talk to my boys when they were younger. I would go to correct them. And as I'm going to correct them, I mean, they did something, whatever it is they did. And as I'm going to deal, before I got it out of my mouth, the Holy Spirit said, that's you. <laughs> happened several times. <laughs> so, now, so now I got to deal with me. And this is what he's saying. Go ahead and say it because it's right. But after you say it, <laughs> go deal with you. God is a God of principle. I mean, that's what some of y'all do. You go to speak on a situation and then you see yourself. And then you shut up. And you go into shame. And then you go into hiding. And you say, I can't speak on that because I don't have authority in that. But it's never you who had the authority in that anyway. It was Jesus who has the authority in that. It's his word who has authority in that. That's why you are to speak it and also be subject to it. <laughs> see, you put it on you. You made yourself the example. So when I go to speak on abortion, and I say abortion is wrong, oh, I took three women to get abortions. See, when you get free, you can be free. I took three trips. It was wrong when I did it, and it was wrong when I got the revelation that it was wrong. But because you're doing it, don't make it right. And because I did the wrong, don't make you right to do the wrong. That's called iniquity. That's self. When you take, Jesus said, he said, be careful that you not mislead one of these little ones. He said, it would be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and drop yourself off in the middle of the sea than you begin to teach, misteach. Why, 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 why? So we make ourselves, hey, hey, help me, the reference point. You are never the reference point. Christ is the reference point. You are the witness. You were never on the cross. He was. So that makes him our reference point. And now when he's my reference point, that's why I bring all my dirt back to the cross. Baby, you can't back me up only up to the cross. I don't go past the cross. Stop letting people back you up on the other side of the cross. Stop letting people bring up your dirt before Jesus. Stop letting people bring up your dirt in Jesus. Because, you know, we still, you be getting a little, you brush our shoulders off a little bit. You know what I mean? When we get in Christ, we're still working through some things. Come on, we're working our own salvation out with fear and trembling, right? We don't have full understanding of what God has done and what he's doing. But there's a spiritual authority that we, that's why we're always to be in work. That's why we're always to be on the potter's wheel. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at another place here. Look at James chapter 4, verse 6. James 4 and 6. Verse 6 and verse 7 in James says this. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace. Come on, who he give grace to? The happy. Who he give grace to? The saved. No, 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 no. Who does he give grace to? The humble. Verse 7, submit yourself. Oh, my God, there they got that curse word again. The most six-letter words. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Uh-huh. Resist the devil, the busy one, the always-in-your-business one, the devil. Resist him, and he will flee from you. Stay right there. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, he will flee. Let me say it another way. Submit, resist, rest. Submit, resist, rest. Now, that's in order. Don't, don't you go resist in verse. That's what we do. We want to fight. We want to resist first. No, 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 no. Submit first. 
You, 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 you don't have the power to resist because grace is released to the humble. Humble is I don't know. And not only do I don't know, I'm going to position myself to know, to find out, to learn. It's foolish to not know and still say you're not going to do what's necessary to find out. I don't know. I don't like I don't know. In our house, that answer is insufficient. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I don't know, but I'm going to go look it up. I don't know. You know what? Thank you for asking me that. I don't know, but get back with me next week. I'm going to have the answer for you. Why? Because I'm going to put myself in position now. It, can, it takes humility. But the devil with his busy self can be resisted because he's already defeated, but you got to go to the one who defeated him. And if you're not submitted to God, you cannot resist the devil. That's why your struggles are so strong. That's why you have no authority when you speak, because you're not submitted to God. The, what did the centurion say? He said, Jesus, don't come to my house. I know how this thing works, player. I have people under me. And I say, go, and they go. And I say, come, and they come. And I say, do, and I do, and they do. So all you need to do, because I'm a man, he didn't say I'm a man in authority. Key, he said, I'm a man under authority. So, so therefore, because he was under authority, he had authority. Because he was under authority, he could speak and things get done. Because he was under authority, when you get under authority, you're going to be able to tell everything going on in your house, stop. Today's the last thing. Last year was the last year for that. This is how our money going to look going forward. Ha, ha, kids, ha, ha, ha. That was yesterday. I don't care. I'm not in get because your kids will work you too. Can I help you? Your kids watch you be a hypocrite. And they be putting bullets in that magazine like, I'm going to use this later. I'm going to use, oh, mama guilty. I'm gonna, I ain't going to say it right now. I'm going to use this later. This is going to be a pair of shoes later. This is going to be an Xbox later. This is going to be a PS5 later. That's why you got to be careful of guilt, shame, and condemnation. That's why there's therefore now no condemnation to those who in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. I could have just messed up yesterday, but then repented and come back to God and not, watch this, not be fully restored, but also not be in guilt. Because there's therefore now no condemnation because I repented and now I'm turned even though I haven't walked it out. It's in the mind. But if I stay in guilt, the enemy going to work me. With accusation, and child, you know, you know, you might as well go on quit. You might as well go on leave the church. Girl, they, this is your fifth time. You might as well go on here. No, I'm not in condemnation. I am the beloved. I am accepted. God welcomes me back. He woos me. He's married to the backslider. Amen? So now watch this. You cannot resist the devil if you don't submit. But once you submit, he will flee. It ain't your job to run him off. He will flee. It, the power is in the submission, not in the fighting. So you're trying to fight to get him to flee. The fight ain't in you stomping on his head. The fight is in I'm submitted to God. I'm where God told me to be, how he told me to be, positioned where he put me. And now the devil has to flee because I'm in obedience. Amen? 1 Peter 5 and 8. First Peter 5 and 8 it says, be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You see that? Whom, there it is again, resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So when I resist him, watch this, be sober, not offended. Not mad, not disobedient, not high, not drunk, not in my feelings. Be sober. You got to be sober so you can resist. You got to be sober because you got an adversary. You have to be sober. And that's the not just drinking. That's sober in your feelings. That's sober in your thoughts. That's sober in your away time. That's sober in your secret time. Sober, amen? Last place, Ephesians 4. Last place, Ephesians 4 22. We're laying the foundation today that all authority, spiritual, the hierarchy of spiritual authority is in Christ. And as we're in Christ, we can walk in that authority. Amen? Are you getting that? Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read verse 22 through verse 27. 
It says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, stop lying. <laughs> Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. What is he saying? The devil, to operate in your life, has to be given place. If you don't give him place, he can be busy all he wants. Walk around the street around my house, but what's in this house is covered by the blood. The children, come on, the marriage, the money, everything, my car. The Bible says that the curse causes us shall not come. So what he has to have is, watch this, an opportunity for you to be disobedient, for him to take advantage of you. He has to have an opportunity to get you out of the understanding of righteousness and truth, to get you over into guilt, shame, and condemnation. That's why you got to be careful of looking through the photo album. That's why you got to be careful of who you talk to and who you open up to. That's why you got to be careful of who you, who you hook up with. Why? Because it could be opening up a doorway. Could the enemy be in the hall waiting on the wrong person to open the door? And now he in your, and you're telling me, well, how this happened? Well, how? Track it. Because if you got spiritual authority, he can't just run up on you like that. He, gotta have, he is illegal if you're a child of God. Spirits are illegal if you're a child of God. That's why you got to be walking to your spiritual authority and what? Be submitted. Because when I'm submitted to God, now watch this. I, if I can't detect it, the people who I'm submitted to can. If I can't detect this, I'm like, okay, something just happened and this one's supposed to happen. Now, now I take this whole situation, come on, to the people, to a mentor, to a leader, to a pastor, to a disciple. to a man. I take the whole situation to it and say, help me navigate this because there's a door open somewhere and I need this door closed. There's been place given to the enemy. I know this is not of God. That means there's a place, there's a door, there's a window open. Call the inspector and have them find out how they keep getting in your house. How the rodents and the pests and the bugs and track it. Track it. But the way you do that is you got to be in God. You got to be in Christ. Yeah, you you got to know that you're loved. Do you hear me? Because your identity will be developed. If you don't do it in love, you're going to be a mean something. An ugly something in the spirit. When I do it through love, I build my identity knowing that God loves me. And even when it's time for correction, I understand that correction is also love. Do you understand how that works? So when it's time for, how, for me to share instruction or correction, I don't move because I know how God works. He gives both. Don't you dare just give your child Twinkies and cookies all day and there's no wop wop. I'm in a modern term, old term, spank day behind. Because God says in the Bible, he says, if you don't spank them, if you don't correct them, then you don't love them. You love the image of you that they have of you. And you don't want to be the bad guy. So love comes with correction and instruction. Why, why, why? It's spiritual authority. Don't you be the, 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 uh, the security guard in the mall. He got a baton at best. Flashlight. They don't fear him. There's no reverence for the mall cop. Yeah, I see him. Why? No consequences. But when you know somebody got some heat, <laughs> when you be like, nah, I'll play it, nah, and he twitching too, his eyes already squinted, you know what, I'm going to leave him alone. <laughs> you got to learn to talk to your kids with that look. I, we, we got Zach trained. He know the look now. We, what they do when Ike turn around on his me? We got that look. You, you call me? <laughs> what am I saying? When you walk in your authority, ha, 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 watch this. You don't have to be moved. You don't have to even be mad. See, authority don't have to get mad to move. Authority don't have to, see, it don't have to all fall apart before you wake up when you're in authority. When you're in authority, ha, it happens one time, and you now put in place what needs to be in place to correct it and keep it and catch it from happening again because you're in authority. You don't let it get out of hand, and now it happened 25 times, and now you're losing it. That's not authority. Authority is sound. Authority is consistent. Authority is in authority. 
because it understands it's under authority, because it understands I have to be I have to be responsible with this power that has been endued and endowed unto me. I have to be responsible for what I say. I have to be responsible for those that I lead. I have to be responsible for my reach and my influence. I have to be responsible when you're a person of authority. So I don't care if you're over a household. Or if you're over ministry, you're over business, you're over a team, be responsible with the authority that has been endowed upon you. You receive something from this word today? Come on, give God a shout of praise right there. I'm going to stop right there for time's sake, but we're going to go into this some more Wednesday. We're going to break it down even more of a practical level. We're going to walk this thing through because I want to believe, hey, time out for the believers being doormats. Time out for you thinking a Christian is you let somebody step on your chest in the name of Jesus. And then we overreact and now we all kumbaya and apologize. If I stay in authority, I don't have to apologize. Let me help you. Let me, let me clarify. If I stay where God tells me to stay and say only what he tells me to say, then I don't have to come back and apologize. Now, if I miss it, if I get, we usually miss it when we get in our flesh. That's what we're apologizing for. That's where we missed it. But when you stay in your authority, guess what? Somebody not going to like it too. And that has nothing to do with what the kingdom of God has already established that you're supposed to do. Our, amen? So, Father, we just thank you tonight. Thank you today for, for, for even bringing us into the revelation of our spiritual authority, which rests in Christ which is sound in Christ. Lord, we thank you right now. Hey, we pull down even the cobwebs, Lord, of even abuse of authority that we've seen in the past, and we've allowed those models to be our models, Lord God. We've been running from authority because we saw it abused. We've been running from positions. We've been running from uh, speaking even from a place of authority. Lord, we remove the guilt. I remove, we shake up right now the broken places. We shake up right now the, the distorted place. We shake up right now the dysfunctional models of spiritual authority. Lord, I pray right now that your people understand that love is the motivation for what you do. And I thank you right there. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. There's no fear. Huh? There's no apprehension when it comes to authority. We thank you right now that our identity is sound in you. Thank you, Lord, that we know who we are in you. And we don't think it robbery to say what God has said. We don't think it robbery to be in the position and place that God has planted us in. And Lord, we will stand and we will do as you have instructed. Uh, we will do as you have instructed with our teams and with our ministries and with our households and with our money and with our call and with our time we will operate Lord God not out of guilt we will not be moved out of guilt not another day will we move and do anything give anything help anybody out of guilt out of accusation out of running from what they might say or running from what they might think or running from who they're going to tell Lord I thank you right now that love is the motivation which comes from identity for everything that we do Lord thank you right now that you got us settled in a place of authority thank you Lord that we are settled in a place of authority and love is our motivator and we will not be moved by any other voice any other strange spirit because love it keeps us love it helps us love it holds us and our identity is founded in love we give you all the honor we give you all the praise in jesus name come on shout amen like you believe it hallelujah Hey, hey, hey. Ha, I got my identity. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Somebody stole your identity. Ha. Get your identity back. Ha. Get your identity back. Get your identity back. Go, go, ha. Go fix everything that got out of order by your identity being stolen. Ha. Go get everything, every report, every accusation that came from you. Let somebody use your identity. Abuse your identity. I am back where God told me to be. Doing exactly what God told me to do. I resist every false concept pertaining to who God called me to be in Jesus glory to God hear me hear me throughout the week now because <laughs> when the word comes the enemy comes immediately for the word right so throughout the week, what's going to be happening is you're going to be tested in areas that you already have authority in. And the enemy is going to buffet you to see if you're going to say what God told you to say. So you need courage and you need strength. <laughs> the courage comes from what you heard God already tell you to do. And the strength is now I'm going to say it. Watch this. And not try to figure out the end. Because if I try to figure out the end, then I'm not going to say in the now. 
If I try to figure out the end, I'm going to be disobedient, and I'm going to say, well, they're going to think this, or they're going to think that. No, 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 that ain't my job. It's God's job to fix the end. He's Alpha and Omega. He's got me in now faith. So my now faith is going to cause me to say, could it be if you said what God told you to say, what if they would repent? What if they would turn? What if they're waiting on your voice to get some bottom, to get some authority, to get some bullets, and say what God has told you to say? So your authority will be tested this week. I want you to walk in it and be high. It's by faith. I said it's by faith. Amen? Be prepared. We're going to walk this thing through because we want you built up and strong for the Lord how to be a proper representative for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're under the sound of my voice and you're watching this, listen, there's a, there's a stirring now uh, uh, for souls. I just sense it that God said he is drawing people unto him now, even in this hour. He's, he's even allowing some chaos and some situations to bring you to let you know that your life is totally out of order and that Christ is the answer, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're under the sound of my voice today and you want to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you want to accept him and the forgiveness of your sins, repeat after me. The Bible says this. It says, that in the book of Romans, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, that God sent his only begotten son, that you will be saved. So here's the confession. Repeat after me. Say, Father God, say, I repent from the sin I committed. I accept Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me that I might live for you. Sin, I'm done with you. Satan, I'm done with you. I belong to God in Jesus' name. If you prayed that simple prayer today, I believe that you are saved. I believe that you've been blood-bought even by the works of Christ and by your faith today. Email us here at savedatworldchampions.org. We want to get some information to you to help you with your walk with Christ and to get you built up in the kingdom of God. Amen? And if you're under the sound of my voice and you're looking for a church home and you want to become a covenant member of World Champions Church, you feel the tug, you feel the pushing, you feel the prompting of the Lord, email us at info at worldchampions.org and we will get some information to you on how to become a covenant member. Until next time, this is World Champions. I'm Pastor Marcus. We love you. God bless you. Walk in your spiritual authority.